Call to order this meeting of the Path Independent School District Board of Trustees in regular session on Tuesday, June 27th, 2023, in the boardroom of the administration building, 1515 Cherry Brook Lane, Path Texas at 70 what? 534. 534. Yes, sir. I'm trying to get through, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> Board members present, Ms. Chris, Crystal Davila, Ms. Kenny Fernandez, Ms. Paola Fuselier, and me, Marshall Kendrick. Board members absent, Mr. Casey Phelan, Ms. Vicki Morgan, and Ms. Nelda Sullivan. That the record indicates that a board of board members is present, and that this meeting is duly called, and that notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Invocation will be given by Mrs. Fusilier, pledged by Mrs. Davila. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today, for bringing us together. I thank you for the great privilege that it is to serve our community in this district. I pray that we make decisions that honor and glorify you, that as children and educators and admin get ready for the new year, that you bring them back safely and give us a great start to the new year and a new uh, year where they can learn and grow and continue the great things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I'll pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> We're going to adjourn to closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074. For the purpose of considering the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, or to hear complaints of charges against a public officer or employee, unless the individual who is the subject of deliberation or hearing requests a public hearing. Concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendation to hire administrative personnel, or and or the superintendent's recommendation related to non renewals, renewals, and termination of contracts for personal personnel. 551.071 to consult with the district attorneys concerning matters in which the attorney, attorney's duty to the door, district under the code of professional responsibility clearly conflicts with the Texas Old Media Act. To seek the advance of the attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or settlement offer and or to consider legal advice regarding items specifically listed on the agenda. 551.072 for the purpose of discussing purchase, change, lease or value of real property. We will convene, reconvene at 7. Yes, sir. I'll call this meeting back to order. Get on the right page here. We have no public comments tonight for this agenda. Uh, consent agenda. I have a motion. So Anybody talking around here? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not no consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion, Mr. Fernandez. Second by Mr. Fusilier. Any comments or questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of quarter report on investments. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Personnel section. Uh, consideration of possible approval of administrative personnel. Oh, Mr. President, move that we approve agenda items A through G. Second. Motion by Mr. Fusilier, second by Mrs. Davila. It's all yours. We have to. Go ahead and take the vote. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We'll now approve it. We, we are all excited. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. First, I'd like to introduce Chanel Foster. Ms. Chanel Foster has been approved for the position of counselor at Southeastern High School. And I heard welcome back is in order. Right. Trojan. Who do you have here today? Family, friends? Yes, I have my, my dad, my mother, Helen, and my two children, Jamel and Tyson. 
I'm so glad they're here. And I see you have a lot of your chosen family, so welcome back. Congratulations. Anna Barkas. Hello. Anna has been approved for the position of educational diagnostician in the special education department. Do you have any family and friends here today? We're happy to have you. <laughs> yes. This is the Pasadena ISD welcome, so welcome here. And Brandy Trevino. Brandy has been approved for the position of educational diagnostician in special education. So um, do you have any family and friends here? Uh, I do. My oldest daughter here. Awesome. Well, welcome back. Also had Tanya Weaver, if you see her, welcome her uh, back to Pasadena. She's not here today. Uh, David Blevins. Uh, Mr. Blevins has been approved for the position of assistant principal at Fred Roberts Middle School. Do you have any family and friends here? Congratulations. And Mr. Michael Katz. <laughs> Mr. Katz has been approved for the position of software application specialist at the Technology Services. Uh, congratulations. Who do you have here today? I have my wife, Jennifer. She's a been approved for the position of Assistant Director of Nutrition Services for Finance and Procurement. Do you have any family and friends here? I have my daughter's here, my son Jonathan, and my husband's husband. Congratulations. Thanks. Good. Congratulations to all of you. And at this time, those that are here for these promotions and new jobs can leave if they would like, or they can stay for the uh, meeting, if you please. So. Whatever you please. South Houston team got a little excited to look up there. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, do I go? Do I, go? I don't know. Do I go? Do you want to go? I don't know. And everybody leaves. You did good. Learn from the best. <laughs> I've never had person. <laughs> Ever. I know. He's going to hand that over so I don't know. No. Let me see. Let me see. I doubt it. <laughs> the lady right here in the white? She doesn't look familiar, no. I think he was a Mr. Blevins. Oh, okay. Okay, let's continue. Consideration of possible approval of reorganization of the curriculum and instruction department with an estimated annual savings of $181,707. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Fernandez, second by Mrs. Davila. Any comments or questions? So board members at your spot, just to give you a graphic of the reorganization, I put that there for you. 
Um, as you know, Tony Lopez, as the deputy superintendent, has evaluated that department and looking at where we can have the most impact as we continue our path of the reorganization of, of, of course, the STAR test and the redesign as well as the accountability system. So looking at how we can serve our students, our staff, and of course our campuses, community, and parents. So this is the plan that we want to move forward with. That's good. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval. Technology specific pay plan and department reorganization for a cost of approximately $146,500. So moved. Second. Any questions? So you have that at your spot also, a graphic organizer. As you know from the agenda item, they've been working with a consultant about, again, just the economy of those positions and what's out there in the market and how to get uh, the best employees and reorg that department to meet the increasing needs that we have revolving around technology. Thank you. Consideration possible approval additional personnel. We got Did we two. vote? No, okay, we ought to do that. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval additional personnel reorganizations and reclassification for the 2023 2024 school year. So move. Second. Motion made by Mr. Fernandez, second by Mrs. Fusilier. Any comments or questions? I, I do have a question. Sure. Um, regarding the reclassification and adjustments that we see on 108, mm -hmm. who takes on these duties or, you know, are these just not needed anymore? So, um, as you know, as we were facing uh, the ESSER funds going away, we've had campus reductions. Uh, we used a lot of our ESSER funding for staffing and keeping those class size ratios down. So as the campuses fill that pinch. Uh, we've asked our departments to be as economical as possible as well. So some of these positions uh, will be continued either through the staff we have now or perhaps we looked at how we could be efficient and get someone qualified in there, perhaps maybe not at the administrative level because when the positions began may not be, of course, um, as necessary at this time, you know, just depending on which one you're talking about. But we do have like special ed program specialist to an asset teacher, for example. So some of the programs um, could benefit from various ways or various means. Um, but we have reviewed all of these through the budget process. This is some of what uh, we are bringing to you in the 23-24 budget. Some of it we'll bring in July, but if it had hiring impact, in other words, we need to get those jobs posted and start mm -hmm. interviewing and hiring, then we wanted to bring it to you now. Okay. So that was critical. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No in favor. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We have certified personnel information only and support personnel information only. Educational section to provide the School Health Advisory Council Shack Board Report for 22-23 and pass the ISD Wellness Policy Triennial Report 22 and 23 by Lise Neff. Come on down. Thank you. We don't have to approve this, do we? Happy evening, school board members and Dr. Powell. Uh, my name is Elise Neff and I'm the coordinated school health specialist. Um, I serve as the co-chair for the SHAC along with Amber McNeish and Mary Davis, a parent from Parks Elementary. I'm here tonight to give the School Health Advisory Council board report. The School Health Advisory Council is required by Texas law to ensure that local community values are reflected in the district's health education instruction. Our SHAC is made up of parents, teachers, district staff, and community members and meets quarterly <laughs> and meets quarterly to collaborate on district-wide health and wellness initiatives and in educating the whole child. We are proud of all the work that the School Health Advisory Council supported in 2022 and 2023. You can find the full report of all of our SHAC activities for the year in the official SHAC board report that you have in front of you, as well as on the district website. 
Uh, we will now mm. see the shack highlights in the following video. Okay. We hope, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hi. Welcome to the 2022-2023 School Health Advisory Council, or SHAC, Board Report. The work of the SHAC is completed within committees based upon the whole school, whole community, whole child model. This model focuses its attention on the child, emphasizes a school-wide approach, and acknowledges learning, health, and the school as being a part and reflection of the local community. In the following slides, you will hear about each committee and hear about their progress this year. But first, we will share some general SHAC highlights. Three of our campuses were named one of America's healthiest schools by the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. This program celebrates schools for implementing policies and practices to promote health and well-being. Because of the work of our SHAC this year, Elise Neff and Amber McNeish were invited to speak on community partnerships at the National School District Wellness Coalition convening through Action for Healthy Kids. Now for the SHAC committee updates. Let's start with the Physical Education and Physical Activity Committee, as well as the Health and Employee Wellness Committee. All the district physical education special events, including pump, pass, and kick, big shootout, Olympia, get fit, jog, and track and field were a huge success. We celebrated the 20th anniversary of Walk for Sight and raised $50,000 for many shack supported programs district-wide. This year, we also celebrated 50 years of the Olympia, our physical education skills showcase. Over 350 students soared to new heights with physical education. Pasadena ISD PE and health teachers were well represented at the Tapered State Convention and a team of teachers presented two sessions. District-wide, schools found creative ways to promote health, wellness, and physical activity with their students, staff, and families, such as walk-to-school events, bike parades, health fairs, recess, and before and after school physical activity programs. Through a partnership with Spark Park, South Shaver Elementary received a new addition to their playground, including swings, slides, and balancing components. 21 CPR Anywhere kits were provided to us by the American Heart Association to assist with student instruction in hands-only CPR and CPR certification for staff. The SHAC collaborated on a district-wide vaping prevention campaign to share the dangers of vaping with students and parents. The SHAC has also been an integral part in the development of the whole child framework. Our employees showed off their skills in our employee volleyball, softball, and basketball leagues. They also had the opportunity to participate in quarterly employee wellness events that challenged them to move more, increase their water intake, to eat well, and to stress less and sleep more. Let's switch gears and learn about our Nutrition Environment and Nutrition Services Committee. The Nutrition Services Department continues to focus on providing fresh, high-quality, healthy meals to all of our students. This past year, they focused on rebuilding their culinary training program within the department. They were awarded the highest level of the Farm Fresh Challenge Award by TDA again this year. They also received the Turn Up the Beat Award for their outstanding summer meal programs. They were one of 21 schools in Texas and 99 nationwide to receive this award. They were recognized for going above and beyond to ensure our students receive high quality meals that are both nutritious and appetizing. We will now hear about the Family Engagement and Community Involvement Committee. Our A-side coordinators and district parent coordinators continue to support our campus communities. They've partnered with many community agencies to provide needed resources to our families and to help build connections between school and home. They have held district-wide events and food distributions to promote the education of the whole child. 
Our ACE site coordinators and district parent coordinators also provided families with a variety of supports through home visits, technology support, educational platform support, and addressing specific needs, including food insecurities and attendance. Special programs also hosted the seventh annual Family Engagement Conference in April. Next up is our Counseling, Psychological, Social Services, and Social Emotional Climate Committee report. This year, 37 campuses received the CREST Award for the 22-23 school year. CREST stands for Counselors Reinforcing Excellence in the State of Texas. This award is granted through the State of Texas Counseling Association. The Counseling Department was also awarded over $5 million for the school-based mental health services grant. The district utilized these funds to hire 10 mental health support counselors to be placed at high enrollment elementary and intermediate campuses. Through the Stop School Violence Grant Program, we were able to provide district-wide training to prevent student violence, implement safe school ambassadors at all intermediate and high schools, and to launch the anonymous reporting system for threats of school violence through the anonymous alert application of the See Something, Say Something campaign. And finally, we will hear about the highlights of the Health Services Committee. We had another amazingly successful Sea to Succeed program this year. We served 1,425 students at Sea to Succeed for a complete eye exam and glasses if necessary. This year was extra special because the Houston Health Department hit a new milestone of serving the 100,000 students, and this just happened to occur during Pasadena ISD. During our staff development day, our nurses were trained in medical emergency triage. Nurses were sent through multiple scenarios to experience real life mass casualty situations. Thank you to all of the SHAC committees for your dedication to educating the whole child. The SHAC has already begun planning action items for next school year. To read more about these items, please review the SHAC board report. As always, thank you so much for your support. is all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, act, uh, next item is consideration of possible approval of the subscription renewal contract with ESC Region 11 for discovery education streaming for the 2023-24 school year. The cost of 96000 $964.74. So moved. Second. Motion Mrs. Fusilier. Second on Mrs. Davila. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible proof of subscription with Texas State Library and Archives Commission for the 2023-24 school year for approximately $14,000. $130.54 based on 22 reported enrollment. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Davila. Second by Mrs. Fusilier. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of 23-24 innovative services for students with autism, autism grant in the amount of $552,979. Moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Fusilier. Second by Mrs. Davila. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of the College and Career Readiness Model Early College High School Blueprint Best Practice Program, granting the amount of $30,000. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Davila. Second. Second by Mrs. Fusilier. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of school safety standards formula grant award in the amount of $2,079,377. So moved. Put it on Mr. Fernandez. Second by Mrs. Davila. 
Any discussion? So, board members, I sent you the spreadsheet of all the items that we had submitted, and of course, our grants department working with our police department and Derek Duckett and others came up with a great list, but there is the option of changing that if need be through the uh, three years of the grant. So just letting you know that as the new requirements come down, we can look at that, review it, and have further discussion. <clears throat> I'd like to make one comment. If you look at item four, five, six, and seven, this is it right at $3 million or more grants that our grant department has gotten. And this is money that allows us to do things that we couldn't do otherwise. And Olivia, your department is always. <laughs> outstanding job y'all do. Consideration possible for the Dyslexia Grant Award Program in the amount of $291,000. Sorry. Oh, did we vote on the last one? Yes, we did. We did. Did we? Okay. Let's vote on the one before. For two million dollars. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no motion passes. Consideration of Prof for the dyslexia grant award program in the amount of two hundred ninety one thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of the Ritchie Community Track Project. So moved. Second. Which one Mrs. Fusilier, second by Mrs. Davila. So, just a quick question. So okay, is this ahead. just to improve what's currently there or? Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about the project and what's involved as far as the track? Is it an improvement or a brand new track? Brand new track. Wow. Well, so this is through a partnership with Bacoda. Well, thank you to Bacoda. That is really great to improve lives of kids and do something that's going to be good. Get them outside, the vitamin D. So, and my you. understanding is, and young Rudy and Christine Torres had a big part in connecting us with this okay. opportunity. Well, thank you so much. Richie, thank you. There we go. <laughs> thank you. Consideration possible proof of. We need a vote. We did. Oh, we did. We did? Vote. Thought no. we did. Okay. Let's vote on it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Enjoy. Consideration of possible approval of the Fueling, fueling Brains Agreement for pre K professional learning and the Fueling Brain software application in the amount of $71,000 for the 2020 through 23 24 school year. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Fusilier, second by Mrs. Davila. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration and possible approval of the partnership agreement with the communities and schools Southeast Harris County for the 2023 2024 school year in the amount of $410,000 in PISD local funds, including the proposed budget for the 2023 220. 2024 school budget school year, $2,012 in federal funds and $59,500 in contributions from campus budgets. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Davila. Read that little part again. Yeah. We messed up the amount. 200. 200. 200 is it 12,000? Is that right? Uh, Gloria? What? 262,000 is in the book and 212 is on the script. So I just mm -hmm. want to double check that, make sure we get the vote right. I believe it's on the revised, it's 212. On the revised. Okay. So, so is there any other again. change on the revised besides that? Yeah, 212. Um, That's what I read. No, okay. okay. So are we good if we read it out right? Okay. So I'll read it again. <laughs> okay. Consideration possible approval of partnership agreement with communities and schools, Southeast Harris County for the 2023-24 school year, in the amount of $410,000 in PISD local funds, including the proposed budget for the 2023-24 school year, $2,012, excuse me, $2,012, $212,000 in federal funds and $59,500 in contributions from campus budgets. So I have doubleized the motion made. Mm -hmm. Ms. Fusilier second. in a second. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions? So, Gloria, do you want to explain that again? The reason for the change was the two social workers Correct. were moved. 
So that we, uh, two social workers were contracted through CIS to service our school mm -hmm. district. And since you just voted in the social workers to come under PISD employment, we had to remove them from the contract with CIS. So therefore, that change. Does that make sense? Now it does. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Does? It. Okay. it does make sense now. Okay. I was trying to figure out where that went or what. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can take the vote now. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration possible approval of budget amendments for May 23rd. May 2023, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Fernandez, second. Second. Mr. Navala. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Ben Poppy, Chief Financial Officer, will introduce the following prior to their presentations. Presentation Mr. John Roebuck, BOK Financial Securities. Tanya Fisher and Rick Whitty. Whit, I hope I got that right. Von Council at Council at Jackson Walker are also here with us this evening. Ben. All right. Well, good evening, Vice President, uh, Dr. Powell, and Board of Trustees. I do have John Roebuck from BOK Financial Services or Securities, and also Tanya Fisher and Rick Whitty are here as Bond Counsel. And so I will go ahead and introduce uh, Mr. Roebuck, and he will give you a brief presentation about some selling of some bonds and some refunding of some bonds. Vice President Kendrick, uh, Dr. Powell, members of the board, uh, John Roe with BOK Financial Securities. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, we do have some opportunities to sell some bonds and save some money by doing a refunding and also a cash defeasance. And that's just a fancy word of saying we're going to prepay some bonds and generate some savings by uh, reducing the interest costs and the principal we're paying off. Uh, there should be a presentation. Um, stop, it's up there. It's coming up. Okay, perfect. And y'all oh, should sorry. have a handout of these. Oh. There were so many handouts today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, got it. No, I saw that. Thank you. There we go. See if that works. So before I get started, we go to the municipal bond market. This is the bond buyer index. This is a weekly index of municipal bonds across the country. Um, currently, the interest rate on Municipal general obligation bonds is about a 3.67, and that basically translates to a 20-year average life bond issue with a double A rating. Y'all's rating is actually better than that. You're a double A plus, and uh, we'll sell this with permanent school fund guarantee, which allows us to sell the bonds with triple A rating in, in the marketplace, which will attract a lot of investors. Um, We'll go through some historical refunding results and saving strategies that district's done in the past. Since 2012, and let me scroll this down because you can't see all of this. We've done 10 refunding bond issues, uh, basically saved over $76 million, and also two cash defeasances in the past, which have saved over $10 million in savings for the taxpayers, for a total of over $87.5 million since 2012. So y'all done a good job of managing money and taking advantage of opportunities to save money when you can in the interest rate environment we're in. Uh, this page shows the current debt service or current bond issues outstanding and their call dates. This kind of gives you a snapshot of the debt that's outstanding, the coupons that are outstanding being paid by the district, and also the call dates. Um, over the next three years, the district has about $98.6 million it can call early or refund for interest cost savings if the market presents itself to do so. And then we'll get through the... the this is the new money bond issue. I'm going to try to scroll this down so you can see the totals here. Is there a way to do this? Let me see here. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. I guess there's not. Uh, we're going to sell the remaining second sell of the May 22 uh, bond election. This will be a second and final sell uh, with generating proceeds of about $180 million. And right now, based on market conditions, we believe we'll give a premium, investors will pay a premium for these bonds. And so we only have to sell basically about $166, $168 million in principal amount to get that $180 million for the district. And then to do that, we have a schedule of events. We're here to, tonight to ask you to approve a, a parameter order, which allows us to move forward. Uh, we already have the permanent school fund guarantee in hand, so we sell the bonds with AAA rating. We'll start working on the offering document and then sell these bonds on guessing, again, we have parameters we can go as market dictates, uh, September 12th. Sorry? Say that again. We'll have a parameter in place if you all approve this so we can actually sell these bonds when the market allows us to. Right now, we're tentatively scheduled to do September 12th. But we, if we can go earlier, we will. If we need to go later, defer it a little later because the market isn't, it's not mm -hmm. strong, we'll wait for that. 
And then, uh, we'll, of course, we'll be in Mr. Pop. We'll be talking to Mr. Poppy. Make sure we actually turn the market so how, right. How long is that good for? A hundred is I believe it's for 180 days. Is that a year? A year, full year, full year. Okay. So, and then uh, once we sell bonds, we'll close about 30 days later. In this in this case, we're looking to close about October 10th, and that will at that point the district will save the funds. And then we also have an opportunity to refund some bonds for interest cost savings. The district has a 2005B uh, variable rate bond issue. Uh, we actually paid off that termination fee for the swaps. The swap's not there anymore. And so now we can refund these bonds for interest cost savings. And then also the 2015A bonds, uh, totaling the two of them totaling about $126 million. Uh, we believe, based on current market conditions, we can save some money for the district. And in this case, about $810,000 a year for the next 11 years or about $8.9 million in interest cost savings for a net present value savings of almost 6%, 5.889%. Uh, and then to accomplish this, we have to wait. Unfortunately, we can't close before November 15th because of the Jobs and Tax Act Craig, uh, in 2017 that was signed into law. We cannot do advance refundings anymore. We have to have a current refunding, which is 90 days prior to the 2015A call date. So the earliest we can close is November 15th. So based on the schedule, we'll uh, sell the bonds October 24th and then deliver them November 28th. And then one more opportunity we have is to defeat some bonds or pay off some bonds early. We've identified about $6 million in bonds from the 2018 bond issue uh, that we can pay off early and generate some interest cost savings. And we will generate about $4.1 million. Um, it will cost us about... Uh, uh, Six six million five hundred seventy-five thousand do so, but by doing so, we'll generate savings of four point one million, and this allows us to manage the tax rate and also lock in that savings for the district. And to do that, we basically get the approval tonight, and then we will actually not um, do this until February of next year. But we have to do this before you set your tax rate, so it's an obligation on the on the tax rate. And with that, I'll be happy to answer the questions you have on the financing plan. I know Rick Whitty and Tanya Fisher are here from Jackson Walker. They, they're the ones that drafted the, um, the documents we're asking you to approve tonight. And they can answer any questions you have on the legal nature of the transactions. And y'all know Tanya Fisher and Rick Whitty. They just have a new firm name, right? That's mm -hmm. correct. With a new firm. So <laughs> familiar faces. Yeah. Well, thank y'all for putting this together. Yeah. It's a great job. You've done a great thank job for us over the yeah. years, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Save us a lot of money. Thank you. Okay, the consideration of possible approval of an order expressing intent to defeat certain of the district's outstanding bonds and approving other provisions related thereto. So moved. Second. Motion been made by Mr. Fernandez, second by Mrs. Davila. Any comments or questions? Thank you all very much for being here. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. One more. We got one more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the next item. I see this on here. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, we, we covered it. It just, we've got to make yeah. sure you don't have any questions on it. The yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Consideration possible proof and order authorizing the issuance of passing independent. District unlimited tax school building and or refunding bonds in one or more series setting certain parameters for the bonds. Authorizing a price offer to approve the amount, the interest rate price, including the term, terms thereof. Authorizing the engagement of bond council, council and other matters related thereto. So moved. Mr. Fernandez, Ms. Davila. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank, all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Consideration of possible approval resolution concerning PISD FICA alternate services dash 457B plan, voluntary 457B plan, and 403B plan. A motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any comments or questions? It's just a yearly update, and we're adding Jeremy Richardson. Make sure he's on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Operations section. Energy Conservation Program and Update and Student Scholarship Check Presentation by David Goff at Generic. Gener Synergistics. Synergistics. <laughs> I'll get in a minute. These are our energy conservation friends. Well, they've done a job for us. They have. Uh, Dr. Powell, school board, uh, it's a pleasure to be here in front of you tonight. Uh, my name is David Goff. I'm with Synergistic, uh, client manager. Uh, we've got quite a team here tonight, uh, our whole team, matter of fact. But uh, we wanted to come and, and uh, give you a, a, an annual update like we've done uh, uh, each year. We also have, uh, we brought some awards and some scholarships. And uh, we, uh, we believe very strongly in our company to give back. And we have tried to do that every year with sponsoring the basketball tournament and uh, the education foundation and things like that. I've uh, had the, the great opportunity to ride on the bus one year and go uh, de deliver some big checks to some science teachers and art teachers and <laughs> some really excited uh, uh, teachers, uh, kids too, but <laughs> the teachers. But uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here in this district. I think we have an exceptional energy program. And the reason we have an exceptional energy program is, one, the support of uh, Kevin Fornoff sitting right there. He is, uh, he's known as our program liaison, and he's the best hes the best we have in the United States. I can tell you that right there. So, and, uh, I've, told, uh, I've told all of our people that. And uh, then the support from Dr. Powell in the district, it's, uh, it, it's, that's the reason it works. And then we have an uh, outstanding team that we're going to be um, uh, mentioning tonight as well. So anyway, I, if, it, if it's okay, uh, I'll go ahead and jump into the presentation and give you an update. Look at here. Okay. Our key program ob objectives, uh, they, they stay the same. We're consistent. Uh, we're looking for cost savings via reduced utility spin, and, and that's mainly with uh, we're uh, competing against consumption and trying to reduce consumption and, and energy waste. Uh, optimize building and comfort systems. That's, that's uh, really the number one thing that we look at uh, is we want to make sure that your, your systems and your buildings are very comfortable. And then we look for a culture, uh, sustainability culture for our, our, our young people and, and, and old people alike. We're a behavioral-based energy program. Um, helping people understand how important it is to save and, and consume energy. So, at that, uh, again, got uh, got my team here. So, James. Hi. Good evening. Uh, my name is James Newkirk. I am the uh, measurement and verification lead for the for the program. Uh, we're going to be going through just a, a few of the kind of big picture uh, numbers. Uh, as we have reached four years of our energy program. This program started in February of 2019. Um, so our base year, if you will, is the 12 months prior to that. So it would be February of 18 uh, through January of 19. Um, and so if we looked at that base year <clears throat> and how much has been, um, how much the spend has changed on utilities, just in the last 12 months, Pasadena ISD is spending on utilities $733,505 less than they did all the way back in 2018. Not a lot of things you could say are less money than they were back then. Um, and the thing is, with that number is including a 12% increase in the cost of energy so Pasadena ISD has absorbed, if you will, the increased cost of energy and spent less since the, the base year. And overall, the spend over those four years is uh, $9,443,624 less than you would have spent on the base year, um, even if things had stayed exactly the same. So. Spending less money is terrific. And this is kind of a graph of the cost per square foot, a way for us to measure 
you'll see this is COVID, obviously, right? But our team worked really hard to make sure that those opportunities to save were taken advantage of. This is um, energy usage. Um, so this is uh, electricity and natural gas. Um, and a trend, as you can see, the base year, that 2018, early 2019 period, is this red line. We um, dipped below that line um, about our third or fourth month in, and we never looked back. Um, we have uh, used less energy. Pasadena ISD has used less energy consistently uh, since that time period. In fact, if you could take all of the energy saved in those four years, and let's say you could put it in one big battery or in a bottle, you could power the entire district for over a year. So this is the greenest energy, is the energy that you don't use. Um, the energy use intensity, it's a way that we measure um, uh, use per square foot allows us to compare districts across the country and regions and that number has been reduced 19.6% uh, since that time period. Uh, one of our most powerful tools in this process is by auditing the buildings. So our four energy specialists who are here with us today, they uh, are in the buildings all days and nights making sure that energy is only being used where it's needed um, and that it's not being used where it's not. Um, and you'll see that a lot of our audits uh, occur during unoccupied times. So 35% of them when there's no one in the building. And then as we look at the total savings, um, we are at $14.8 million as of February of 23, um, which is about a 20% savings. So it's just been steadily climbing, a, a tremendous program, really an honor to be part of it. Um, I'm gonna have uh, Ms. Carrie DeBose come and take the next slide. Thank you, good evening. I'm Carrie DeBose with Synergistic and I'm here to present the Best in Class Award. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, this award is a high achievement award that is just reserved for model energy conservation programs. It really allows a school district to be able to set themselves apart and become part of a much smaller group that consists of model programs. And so Pasadena has served as an excellent example of, of modeling um, energy stewardship across the nation to other districts. And uh, we just wanna say congratulations for that. The recognitions are really based on several different things. And one is um, an organization's uh, energy use index rating, a very low rating. It's also based on um, the conservation impact on the environment that you've made. It's based on above average financial savings that the district has saved. And then it's also based on excellent support from leadership, from the board, from teachers and staff and students and building operators. So again, congratulations on that. Um, as, as you know, we've been in partnership now for four years, and so a dedicated partnership has really created a healthier, more efficient buildings for Pasadena ISD and earned you all the best in class award. So really um, wanna thank some individuals, Dr. Powell, thank you for your support and leadership, and, and Kevin Fornoff for being such an excellent program liaison. Also wanna recognize the energy specialists. So if you all will kind of stand up as I read your names. Um, Jim Volger, Stormy Shepard, David Zalisek, and Jacqueline Hawkins. So, uh, again, thanks to, um, to everyone that's involved, including the maintenance and operations team, who the energy specialists rely heavily on as part of the energy management team. Also, we want to thank all the supervisors um, at the district level, so uh, custodial, nutrition services, project management, building leadership, and, and all the staff that the district has. So together, through all that collaboration, the district has been able to save around 20% energy use reduction and you've been able to save around 15 million in savings. Um, that's excellent. 
so just a couple of things to point out as far as what that impact would have on the environment. So that's equivalent to 1.6 million trees grown. And it's also equivalent to charging 11.8 billion cell phones, which is almost accounts for if everybody in the whole world had a cell phone. So that's great. So congratulations. It's my honor to present the Best in Class Award. Um, again, thank you for serving as such a model district. And we also uh, have a check that Synergistic is going to donate to Pasadena ISD. That's $10,000 to go towards scholarships. Wow. So if we could get a picture. Last announcement that I, uh, I want to uh, talk about is we have uh, we also make sure that each year the the district is representative uh, represented um, with Energy Star awards. Uh, Energy Star is an EPA award that's presented to the top uh, 25 percentile of the schools in the United States for energy conservation. There's a lot of criteria that goes along with this, but. You've had a lot of schools to make it during the during the uh, the, the uh, years that we've been together. We've uh, we have certified these. Our plaques aren't in yet to present to the principals, but the the schools with the asterisks up uh, next to them. Uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of small, and my eyes are kind of bad. But uh, the ones with the asterisks have qualified for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, for Energy Star uh, ratings and awards, and this is not uh, this is not easy to do uh, by by any means, uh, and and so the district has uh, some twenty odd schools that's going to qualify for this year, and we're going to get together with the building principals and make a big to do uh, over a presentation. So, anyway, is there any questions or anything? Could I answer any questions or anybody have any comments? Uh, our kickoff Perfect. meeting with our principals is August 2nd, if you have those plaques ready and want to do that there. Perfect. Let's, 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 uh, let's go ahead and schedule that. Thanks. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you I would just like to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say to your company that uh, you've done exactly what you said you could do. And uh, you got one of ours working with you? A couple. A couple of them, huh? Okay, good. We also, because of that, at our church, started using your system, found the same savings. Awesome. So it's been a godsend for us, too. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. This is a, and I, I'm in a lot of school districts around the country. I'm a I'm 31 year Texas public school person myself. This is a throwback district. I've told Kevin this. Yeah, because what I see is you guys do things the right way all the way through and, and I just wanted to throw that out thank you very much thank you thank you consideration of possible approval of pre-event master service agreement between PISD and Cotton Commercial USA Inc introduce uh, Luis Martinez 
No, this is uh, on this one. Are we on cotton? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. We have uh, Royal Mosher. Is that right? Am I saying it right? Okay. Did I get close? All right. Closer With Good. <laughs> Closer than most. Sorry about that. Mosher? Mosher? Mosher. Got it now. Cotton Business Development. And they've been helping out us a lot, board members, uh, recently with some of our hell damage at our campuses and been doing a very good job. So I just want to give a shout out for that. Thank you very much. Take your motion now. Yeah. Have a motion? So moved. <laughs> motion by Ms. Fusilier. Second. Second by Ms. Davila. Miss Davila, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep getting you married. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose no. <laughs> I, I did have one question. Sure. What does the first in line get us? I, I'm, I'm very curious. How so quickly. when we have a hurricane or some other disaster, I guess you would say, uh, we contract with companies, and uh, first in line would mean we were given priority. Okay. And so when we pick up the phone, we're going to get an answer and service. And so that's very important because yeah. those companies are very popular exactly. during natural disasters, and being a priority is, is necessary, especially with an organization our size. Yes. Well, thank you. We did vote, right? We yeah. did. Yeah. We either married Crystal off or we voted. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, did vote. we got one right. Okay. No, we, we did vote. No, we did not vote. We need okay. to vote. Which of y'all is telling the truth over here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to decide what just happened. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Okay. Welcome to the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Consideration and possible approval schematic design phase for the 22. 2022 bond program new Williams Elementary School replacement project Arcadis is this and Lewis and Danny Brewster are going to right. speak to us about all these exciting plans so we're excited to hear from them and that is this one here. all right Dr. Powell uh, members of the board we're proud to be here we are Arcadis but don't be confused. We, we're, just, we're the same folks that were Texas IBI and IBI and Bay Architects all through the years. We've, we've been in the district a long time. We're super proud and happy to be here tonight. We're presenting the schematic design phase of Williams Elementary Replacement. If you remember, the schematic design is the initial early concept, so where we go through the program, get the big ideas for the building of uh, what we think it's going to be and what it's what the theme of the project is going to be and that it meets all the required parameters. And then we'll come back in a couple of months and do a, uh, a design development book for you. So uh, we'll get to the drawings here. First of all, thanks, thanks again for the opportunity. We, we, we're, we're longtime partners with this district, and it's very important to us to remain partners with this district. So that takes us to Williams Elementary. Uh, 1959, this school was built over near Scarborough. And Southmore, uh, it's really done a, a bang up job of educating kids in Pasadena for a long time. Uh, but it's time. Uh, it's it's time for this school to be replaced. The community uh, deserves a new school. The kids there deserve a new school. And thanks to the uh, bond steering committee and the the school board, it was added to the bond. And uh, we're happy to say we were chosen to help replace this school. So some of the reasons why you'll see here, as you can see from the site plan on the left, uh, a very spread out building with lots of uh, temporary buildings. The only access in and out of the site is on Scarborough, so very limited street frontage there to get cars and buses and staff in and out. And uh, the, the building, I mean, the uh, picture on the, the right hand represents uh, the car rider line, the orange line represents how far out away from the campus the, the cars are lined up every day to pick up their kids. So uh, the site's only eight and a half acres. Uh, generally, we look for 12 to 15 acres for an elementary school. The uh, locked in land-wise by that apartment complex in the lower right-hand corner and just below that is a very large truck yard. Uh, just lots of limitations on this site. And so 
we got to work with those limitations and with a just an excellent uh, team at the campus. We have a very engaged, caring team about this school, <laughs> and they are. It is. It's, it's very fun working with them. They're, they're, they're really good. So we gave them a lot of options. We talked a lot. We talked about what's important to this, which, to this campus, what, what's important on, to this school for adjacencies, what, what they see as the big ideas. We came back with uh, five concepts, talked through it, and arrived at option two on this screen right here. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Luis, our project manager on this project, to talk you through the design. All right. Hello, everybody. All right. So a lot of times the site uh, tells you what the building wants to be. Because the site was so small, it needed, to, it needed to be a compact design, which is what we have here. Oh, wrong way. All right, so the, the, uh, because it's a compact design and because we have certain f adjacent features on, uh, next to the site that we need to consider, so we have that, um, let me see if my pointer works here. We have the apartment complex here and the truck yard here to the south. So we had to move the building as far north as possible. And so by doing that, the front entry is facing Scarborough, which is a rough orientation for solar, right? So this, uh, this solar study shows you that approximately around 6.30 to around noon, that front facade is getting full sun. Mm -hmm. So once again, the, the site tells you what the building needs to be, right? And I'll show you what we came up with in the next few slides. All right, so this is the uh, site plan. <clears throat> so. The, uh, the entry off of Scarborough is enough stacking, car stacking, for approximately 120, 22, 122 cars, which takes all that traffic off of Scarborough and Southmore. Wow. That's quite a bit. Yeah. So the, the, the other thing about the site is that we have to allow for on-site detention, which we showed here, mm -hmm. right? The other school didn't have that. We do, because the site is so small, we do have a small playground, but we have um, a finger design with the classrooms that allows for outdoor learning spaces, which we'll show you more in a few minutes. Why two detention ponds? Well, because we need room for uh, the cars to circulate onto the site. And we can, we're, we're thinking we can tie these two, t two ponds together with underground uh, piping to, to allow for more capacity. Uh, further study needs to be done with civil to, to make sure we have enough size. Right. You mean tie those two right there together? Yep, tie these two ponds together right here with underground piping. All right, so this is just a, a starting point for the uh, courtyards. Uh, we're, we're thinking that we'll tie them into the theme, which we have for the school, which are, which are the four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. And so as we move into DD, we'll develop those a little more. So this is the uh, floor plan. Early designs had the library in the center part of the, uh, the building, but um, with design help from Principal Coppage and her team, we moved it out to the front so it can get more daylight, and it gave us an opportunity to celebrate the library, which we'll show you in, in the next couple of slides. So each pod, it's a classroom pod layout. Each classroom has um, six classrooms, all receiving natural daylight and I'll, I'll show a little more detail of that in the next couple of slides the cafeteria and gym are located here which easy access for after hour events this is the second floor the first floor has kindergarten uh, pre-k kindergarten and first grade the second floor has uh, second third and fourth All right, so this is kind of like a, a 3D view of what's happening with the pods. 
So you see all the classrooms have natural daylight. In the center, we have support uh, features. For every, every pod has the same support features. There's restrooms for the students. There's a break room uh, for staff, as well, as well as their own restroom, and a work room here, and a flex space. Now the flex place, flex space place was specifically placed on the outside wall, so that way if there's any need for future expansion, we can just put up a wall here and enclose it for another classroom, reducing the number of T buildings in the future. There's also mechanical and IDF support at the entry. Each pod is also uh, equipped with uh, doors that can be locked down for security reasons. But those are still windows in front of the classrooms? Yes. On the, on the interior, you mean? Yes. Yes. Those are bulletproof? <laughs> They, they can be bullet resistant with that film that the district uses. All right, so this is the administration wing. So the security vestibule, if I can get my pointer to work, is right here. So the security vestibule is here. The receptionist has a full view of people approaching the entry. There's a restroom here that's part of the lobby that has a separate, separate access point. The other feature that we designed was that all the, all the administration offices have full view onto approaching traffic. So the more eyes you can have out, uh, looking out to the front, the more secure the building can be. So this is the library feature that we're kind of celebrating here. Uh, because of its position. Can you go sure. back on that that last slide? The RR, what is that? Restroom. Okay. I assume. That yes. Parents. parents or folks that are coming in to register or whatever have access without getting access to students or building. building. Right. Yeah. Vendors, others. Mm -hmm. Smart. All right, so this is the library. As I said, because of its position in the building, we wanted to celebrate this. So it's a double height space. We have learning stairs in the back of the building, or the back of the uh, room, that can be used for multi-purpose reasons. Kids can grab a book, go read on the steps. You can have uh, faculty quick meetings on the steps. It's a variety of functions. So it's a multi-purpose area. There's also some little reading nooks that we placed here in the corridor. What is that by the circulation desk right behind that? Just a wall? That's a wall. That's it's the black at the bottom. Yeah, that's just a wall. Okay. Yeah. All right, so this is the uh, front elevation of the school. As, as I said, the site determines what the building needs to be. Because of its orientation to the sun, we had to create a roof line that comes out to help with shading. The side walls come out to help with shading. The window behind there is pushed back into the building for sun protection. And we also created this uh, tree-like structural element mm -hmm. that kind of plays into the theme, the earth theme. So, you know, it, it's, it's a graphic kind of representing a tree loosely with uh, colored panels inserted. It, they also, it also adds additional shading into the interior space. All right, so these are the, uh, the themes that we're gonna be working with as we move into DD, earth, air, water, and fire. It'll be repeated throughout the, uh, the campus in different ways. So as I said, we'll develop that more with the uh, principal and her staff. Okay, I'm gonna hand it back to Jerry, I mean to Danny. Jerry. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, can Jerry you're up. <laughs> Jerry, Long firm. I want to go back uh, to the to the detention question. The for schematic design, we get an idea from the civil engineer. He doesn't know yet till we 
get this approved, then he'll start working on it. But understand that our site in Pasadena, we must have detention. We're going to have more impervious surface. They will not allow pumping of detention. So a deeper, smaller detention pond was never going to be an option. Uh, it's shown as two ponds now just because of the surface area we need, and we're still not sure we've got enough mm. is, is what's going yeah. on with that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll work on that during DD. Uh, I think y'all probably would fall asleep if I went over the code and the MEP narrative, <laughs> although your energy managers may want to see some of this. Uh, so I will come to the, to the program. We were working with the program developed by the school district. Uh, we had some changes working with the design committee on campus. Uh, we arrived uh, where, we are, where we're at currently in schematic design. We're showing that we've got about 2,000 square feet we need to trim out of this, and that's, that's in the right neighborhood for us during schematic design that we, we feel like that, that's an achievable thing to fit the budget. Uh, and there is the budget. Uh, there's the estimated cost down at the bottom. The building cost at the time we ran this at the top were in the range of 28 million to 38 million based on the square foot cost, based on the scope. The materials depends on what you put in the facility and what the site amenities are. So uh, we're, we're going in the right direction on budget and program. Uh, we had a little bit of a glitch on the schedule, but here's the corrected one. Uh, I hope to get the kids in uh, fall of 2006, if not sooner. 26. <laughs> Thank you. We're all having the same problem, Danny. <laughs> Must be in the moon or something. Beautiful design. Thank you. Uh, we're very proud of it. Happy to be working in the district. Thank you, sir. I was very you. impressed with all of the notes and information you took from the staff, which I think is really important because they're there day in and day out. So excited to see it. They've been very attentive and wonderful to work with. We're super excited. And so thank you guys and the community and uh, the it's going to light up that end of town, isn't it? For sure. It's awesome. Okay, here we go. Just a minute. We've got to have a motion on this. We have a motion. Now we got to vote. Well, we have to have a motion, okay? So moved. We did already? Yeah. Who did? Second. Okay. And you second it. And Fernandez second. Too many. Got two Fusilier and Fernandez, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion passes. Aye. Good job. Now we get to see the other one. <laughs> Consideration of possible approved design development phase for the 2022 bond program, New Jessup Elementary School replacement project. Mr. Jerry, you're up. Yes, sir. <clears throat> With me tonight is Roger Brownlow, project manager for the yes. project, and Viardo Selva. So uh, we've been working very closely with the campus. Uh, line is here. There he is. Oh, I lost you for a minute there. So uh, <laughs> we are at design development phase of the project. So if you remember uh, earlier, we presented the schematic, which is the conceptual idea. So now we've been working closely with the campus to refine and build on that original concept. So we're going to take you through some of those images tonight, and then we have a about a three-minute video that's going to take you on a virtual tour of the building. Wow. Also. So we'll click through these pretty quickly here. So if you remember a schematic design, the theme was still in, in uh, transit and different options were being explored. The theme that the campus finally arrived at was uh, Eagle explore eagle exploration so we'll be working kind of looking at the eagle habitats and the activities of the eagle in the clouds and the trees and under the water and bringing in exploration elements into the building we went and toured some buildings looked at some graphic images and those kind of things we're working very closely with the campus to incorporate strong elements of nature through shapes and some of the abstract forms from the taken from the eagle's nest and those kind of things will be incorporated into design elements of the building. 
On our site plan, very little has changed from what we showed you at the, uh, the schematic design phase of the project. Uh, some detailed refinement, but overall the concept remains the same. Uh, this is Alameda Genoa along the bottom of the street here. We also have one access, one street access to the property. The white dashed white lines represent the existing building structure on the site. And then the district purchased this adjacent property west of the existing building. So the blue represents the footprint of the new Jessup. So uh, as you see, we didn't have a lot of space either. So a lot of the things that the design of the building was driven again by the side aspects as well. So the existing structure, we wanted to keep as much of that intact as possible. We have the one street access. We wanted to separate traffic on the site and then also detention uh, comes into play. Uh, so, and we're in the city of Houston. So our detention has to be completed at the time our building is completed. So we have to work out a plan so the detention could be complete as the new building is completed and occupied. So we've separated traffic. So coming in off Alameda Genoa, we have the bus traffic coming to the front of the building. Right here is the main entry. Drop off along the front of the building for bus traffic. There's visitor parking and some staff parking up in that area of the building as well. Over to the right would be the automobile stacking area. Again, large stacking drive. We flare the driveway out and have two lanes incoming uh, to a large uh, uh, faculty and staff parking area in the rear of the building. And then our third access point is we're bringing service to the west side of the building. We're kind of turning our back on the properties that abuts over to this side and focusing our building to Alameda Genoa and then to the large green space we'll have after removal of the existing structures and buildings. We also wanted to get as much of this done as possible in the initial phase of construction. So if you see, kind of look at this part of the building, we'll have everything complete uh, with the exception of this driveway. So we'll be able to utilize this driveway on a temporary basis to access the parking in the rear of the building. And then after we demolish the building and the parking areas, then we'll construct this new driveway here. So we're trying to get make it as easy as possible when we open the new building to have parking and access on site. And that to the left is all land. Yes. Well, there's there are some buildings right up that are very close to the property. So not, a, not a major street. No, no, no. It's just land. Yes. Yeah, Continuation land. of land. Right. Yes. And this the parking in the front on Alameda Genoa mm -hmm. actually crosses Alameda Genoa, both entrance and exits, correct? Because I'm right, 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 Ryan. This is Alameda. when you come out of yours now, you have to go around the median and then come back, right? That's yeah. We're, okay. we're aligning driveways okay. with the median. With the median. Right. right. There's also beautiful trees on the property, so mm -hmm. we're working to keep all of those trees and maintain those uh, along the front, and then we'll have some of those in the playground area after the existing building is removed. Moving to the floor plan, uh, again, overall concept-wise, the plan still functions the same. We've done a lot of refinement and detail work on the plan. It is a two-story building. We have three academic pods on the first floor, pre-K, K, and first grade. We have the red area is the administration area, so it's up front, centrally located. It has glass and views all out to the approach to the building for security and monitoring of traffic entering the building. Uh, the center part is an interior courtyard with a library space, kind of the core of the building. And then over to the left of that, we have the green is the gymnasium area, dining space with an attached platform or stage area. We have uh, music and science in this area, and then special education services over in this corner of the building. So this main street that runs all the way through the building kind of de delineates these activity or more noisy spaces and provides some separation from the rest of the building for some of the quieter academic spaces. We have two cross quarters that connect those main streets, one here between the library and the admin, and then this is actually a covered walkway in this interior courtyard that provides some shade and some activity space, but it allows a protected crossover as you move through the building. And then we have an art room located here as well. The second floor of the building has three academic pods. We have second, uh, third, and fourth <coughs> located on the second floor of the building. 
We ha also have the coaching area for instructional team up here. And then we have a special feature right here adjacent to the second grade we'll see in the video that's a small group area and it hangs over and kind of con visually connects to the library space below. The library is a two-story volume. <coughs> Just kind of show you the massing of the building. So there's a one-story piece in the front where special education admin is located and then the remainder of the building is basically two-story with the three academic pods, the library being a two-story height space, dining being a two-story height space, and the gym being a two-story height space. So the theme starts to appear as you enter the building as the eagle's wing begins to spread and welcomes you in, in entry into the new Jessup Elementary School. So we're using this as a uh, to, to mark the entry and also exposing some of the structural elements to have a play of light and shadow at the entry area. Uh, this is a view of the building. Just briefly talk about materials. Uh, the bottom portion of the building, this red color, is a brick. Above that, we're using a horizontally ribbed uh, metal panel. And then the blue colors that you see here are glazed brick that are brought into the admin area and then some of the two-story volume areas in front of the library. And then that brick continues at the entry here under the Eagle's Wing. This is just a view from the play area on the, uh, up to the east. So we showed this because this is now where the building is. So you'll see this all this become open green space and play space for the building. Uh, this will also be set up as a community park or play area and we've delineated the fencing so a community can have access to this part of the site and the building will still be protected by interior layers of fencing and prevent access uh, to those building areas. In addition to that central courtyard, we've created an outdoor space between uh, the academic wings to allow some of the student activities and learning to occur out in that space as well. And then this is just the back view of the building. On the rear, there is a long canopy. The car traffic pulls up to and drops off, pull, drops off and picks up students in the rear of the building. Again, we see the play area and the academic wings. Okay, we're going to show you a video now. So we are representing actual colors and materials in this video. So what you see is what the building should look like when we open it.
excited about the project. We appreciate the input and the involvement from the campus. It's been a great team effort, everybody working together for the success of Jessup, and we're very excited to present design development tonight. Looks fantastic. A lot of angles. Yeah. But that's what part you got. That's, that's, that's what create means, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Very exciting. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Ms. Fusilier? Second. Ms. Crystal Davila? All those favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Carries. Thank you all so much. Consideration possible for the conveyance of a sidewalk easement located at Wall Street. East property line of the maintenance operations and warehouse facility in the amount of one dollar. Motion made by Mrs. Davila. Miss Miss Davila. Second by Ms. Fusilier. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of change order number 001 for the football field synthetic turf conversion at five, who's, five high schools project in the credit amount of $218,888. So moved. Second. Who made the motion? Kenny? Any comments or questions? I got it. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Consider consideration of possible approval change order number 002 for the new administration building replacement project in the amount of $1,020,293. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fernandez, second by Ms. Dav Ms. Davila. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Consideration of possible approval allowance expenditure authorization AEA number T002 for the new administration building replacement project in the amount of $1,020,292. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Fernandez, second by Ms. Davila. Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 No. Motion passes. A construction update for information only. We have public comments, miscellaneous, related to topics not listed on the agenda, 30 minute allotment. Ms. Robbie here. You're up. She has three minutes, I think. Yeah. Did you keep time? Okay. She'll do it. Keep time. Good evening, school board members and Superintendent Powell. My name is Yen Rabe. I'm a public school teacher and a, um, an advocate for public schools. I wrote an email to all board members and Superintendent Powell concerning the charter school being built in Riverstone Ranch um, and asked what, what are Pasadena ISD and the school board doing to promote our public schools and keeping students in the district. Uh, this charter school has been in the building for 10 years now, but it, it looks like it's, keep, it's picking up steam. And so it's going to uh, be completed soon. So uh, charter schools are aggressively marketing to our students with billboard signs, showing up to community meetings, and flyers. Thank you, Dr. Powell, for your response. Uh, but I'm not sure if any other board members uh, received my email, if you've read it, and uh, because I haven't heard any response from you. So love to hear what your thoughts are on that. And uh, I think PISD can do more to retain our students, especially at the high school in the north side. How can students choose to stay in schools that need repairs when they can attend a brand new school? Um, there was a situation where there was a major leak at Pasadena High School, and um, one student called the major leak situation where students had to attend class in wet clothes 
and school and shoes at Pasadena High School inhumane. A uh, Pasadena High School teacher told me two years ago that it was going to get fixed, so I was very surprised to hear about this leak. As I drive by uh, Pasadena High School, I see most of the cover, the roof covered with white tarp. So I'm wondering what's going on, and uh, I guess it's being repaired, but I wonder about the you damage one in the building. At South Houston High School, there was a sewage leak uh, where a student, where a teacher said that it was the worst smell they have ever smelled. Uh, that didn't sound quite right. Why was the school, why was the money from the bond not used to fix these building issues? This is not an acceptable situation for students to learn in, especially when the school board chose to build a 27, 27 million dollar administration building. Instead, our students should come first. Thank you. So as you got your response, Ms. Robbie, we are uh, communicating with our parents and our community. I know our board um, has received some of the mailers that we've done showing that we're outperforming our local charter schools. Uh, we have lower class size ratios. We, of course, spend less on administrative costs than charter schools in the area. And of course, we have teachers that stay with us much longer than any charter schools in our area. The one you're talking about is my neighborhood as well, and I wouldn't put my child in it. It's been in construction for over 11 years and has had severe damage done to it. It will not be ready this school year, but we will work to combat kids looking uh, to attend that school because all of our schools in that area are performing at a high rate. Those are all A and B campuses, so I feel bad for taxpayers. I don't think it's a big secret that I'm not an advocate for charter schools because they're paying for a seat in high-performing campuses and they're paying for a seat in a charter school. That is not necessary because our kids are getting the best option right here in Pasadena ISD. Our programs, whether you talk about dual language, whether you talk about early college high school, you name it, we have the best programs for students. As far as the construction issues, yes, the roof is being repaired at Pasadena High School. We can't control the weather. I know our friends at Cotton had to come over because hell damage was done to that building after it had already had repairs, but it was part of the bond. It's continuing now to be part of insurance costs because of nature, um, but we are taking care of it in a very timely manner. A lot of repairs inside as well that had nothing to do with the hell damage that's being done at that campus. Um, I'm very proud of the amount of money that we spend. I know we've shared that with you time and time again, but our community knows that we're spending money and we're doing good things for kids across the district. I don't care what area that is. Williams Elementary is in a totally different area than Jessup is, but great things are happening. So I'm proud of our staff, I'm proud of our maintenance department, and I'm on the same page with you. We're advocates for public education. So thank you. <coughs> If the northern of business before this board, the next board meeting will be set Tuesday the 25th. Do I hear a motion? So moved. July 25th. Second. Fernandez, get Mr. Fernandez, Ms. Fusilier, any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are adjourned.